The pandemic has spurred a resurgence of remodeling activity, and I've been on back-to-back -back calls with homeowners interested in either remodeling, renovating, or upgrading their home. And I get asked two common questions. The first question I get asked is, is it a good time to remodel? And the second question I get asked often is, where can I get the money? Well, in this video, I'm gonna share three reasons why now is the best time to remodel your home. I'm gonna give you three sources where you can get the money to remodel. And I'm gonna give you three mistakes you want to avoid at all costs. So let's get it. Hello everyone, my name is Jorge and I am a mortgage advisor and welcome to the Home Equity Coach. We are a community of homeowners, investors, and real estate and mortgage experts. And our goal is to provide homeownership education, share our experiences, and empower you with knowledge so that you can buy and sell real estate with confidence. If this is your first time visiting my channel, like, share, comment, and subscribe so you can be up to date with relevant home buying, selling, and investing information. You do not want to miss out on this valuable content. If you're watching this video, at some point, you thought about a home improvement project. Whether you wanted to upgrade your kitchen, maybe you wanted to install a new swimming pool, or maybe just repair your roof. I'm here to tell you that now, more than ever, is a great time to get the job done. Here are three reasons why now is the best time to remodel your home. Number one, interest rates for cash out refinances are historically low and the cost to borrow money is cheap. Why not capitalize and save money by locking in a low interest rate now? You probably will never have to refinance again. Number two, home values have skyrocketed, which means the equity in your home has increased. Why not capitalize on this surge in home value by tapping into your home equity. According to the National Association of Realtors, the US median home price rose by a record shattering 17% in March compared to a year ago. In my market, the California Association of Realtors reported existing homes median price rose by 20% compared to a year ago. So let me put that into perspective. If you bought a home last year in March for $500,000, Today, your home would be worth $600,000. That's a 20% gain in equity of $100,000. Not bad, right? Number three, today lenders have eased their standards on borrowers' loan qualification requirements, which make it easier for qualified borrowers to get money. During the pandemic, lenders tightened guidelines and artificially increased interest rates to push people away from cashing out on their equity, making it impossible to get cash. Next. I'm gonna share three sources where you can get the money to remodel your home. The first source is, if you have more than 20% equity in your home, I would recommend a 30-year cash out refinance. So let me just quickly explain what a cash out refinance is for some beginners. A cash out refinance is when you pay off your current loan and get a new loan so you can pull money out. Uh, it's a one-time lump sum amount of money from the equity in your home. Lenders, they're gonna allow you to pull out up to 80% loan to value of your home. So for example, if your home is worth $500,000, you can borrow up to $400,000 if your home was paid off in full. Now, if you have a home project that will cost more than $30,000, a one-time cash out would make sense. Even if your current interest rate today is lower than what an interest rate for a cash out refinance would be, your rate would still be historically low. You can spread out the monthly payments and amortize the loan over 30 years, which honestly would minimize your monthly payments and would give you space to breathe. The second source is a home equity line of credit, also known as a HELOC. So instead of pulling out a one-time lump sum amount of money from your home, equity as you would with a cash out refinance, you can select a home equity line of credit where you are given a maximum amount of cash that you can withdraw during a set time period and during that time, you will only be responsible to make the payments on the outstanding balance. Think of it as a credit card. You have a maximum line of credit and you can use as much as you want, whenever you want, and you can withdraw the funds more than once. 
So this is a great option if you have multiple projects, but maybe you don't know exactly how much it's going to cost, or maybe you don't know what the timeline is going to be. The third source is borrowing against your 401k retirement account. So don't know if you knew this, but federal law limits 401k loans to $50,000 or half of your account balance, whichever is less. I recommend that you borrow from and not liquidate your 401k account. If you cash out money from your account, you're going to pay a 10% penalty for early withdrawal if you're under the retirement age and you're going to have to pay taxes on that amount that you liquidate. So borrowing against your 401k is great if you need money quick and fast. Keep in mind that not all companies allow you to borrow from your 401k and if you don't pay back the money, you're going to be subject to that 10% early withdrawal penalty and you're going to pay taxes. Now there are other sources of obtaining money for remodeling, renovation and home improvements projects uh, and they include personal credit card use, right? Uh, or getting an unsecured personal loan from a bank, a credit union or an online lender. Um, I would recommend maybe these two options if your home project was less than $10,000. Otherwise, I would stick to the first three options I mentioned before. And I'm going to post a video on my channel breaking down a side-by-side -side comparison between a cash out refinance, a HELOC, and a 401k loan. So make sure you visit my channel to see which one would make more sense for you. Next, I will share three mistakes to avoid at all costs. The first mistake you want to avoid is underestimating the costs and the time it's going to take you to complete your project. The second mistake to avoid is working only with one contractor. The key is to interview multiple contractors in the beginning to get as many quotes as possible. Look up the contractor's license on your state's website and make sure their license is active and in good standing. Once you've settled on the right independent contractor and negotiated estimates, it's time to develop a written binding contract stating your agreement. Now, a written contract is a must because it minimizes miscommunications, it sets expectations, and it protects you from unexpected costs and legal consequences. I mean, after all, hiring a general contractor isn't always a simple process. Now, the third mistake to avoid is using cheap material, such as paint, fixtures, flooring, etc. I mean, come on, we all want to save a buck, but if you're planning on living in your home for a very long time, you want to make sure that the renovations last forever or at least as long as possible, right? Now that I've shared these tips, the next thing you should do is, number one, outline a plan that will include the home project details, the budget, your timeline, and your opportunity cost. Borrowing money will affect your debt to income ratio, which will affect your potential qualification for other loans in the near future, like buying a home. It affects your debt to income ratio. So keep that in mind. Number two, Perform a cost-benefit analysis and ask yourself, how much value will the new upgrades add to my home? A rule of thumb is if you want to increase the value of your home, you want to go $2 for every $1 that you spend. This isn't a hard rule, it's just a best practice that some flippers use as a baseline. Number three, add 10 to 20% to your original estimate of how much it's going to cost to remodel your home. The reality is there are always unexpected costs, there's delays and mishaps, uh, when working with contractors or third parties. Unfortunately, this is going to happen 100% of the time, so be prepared. Now, if your home project requires a permit, then you will be at the mercy of the city, the contractor, and sometimes Mother Nature. So plan accordingly. So that wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more amazing content. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me directly by visiting the home equitycoach.com. Until then, see you next time.